hear me? Yeah. My name is Michael Brown. I am a neuroscientist. Um, I also run Sentiment Capital, which is an early stage venture fund investing in people of color who are neuroscientists and also advertising professionals in the United States. I'm in the for raising at the moment. And I created a field called Neurosentiment about three years ago in partnership with MIT, the Media Lab here, the Kansas University Medical Center and Fielding University. And very simply, at a very high level, it's just combining spatial temporal understanding with understanding what's actually going on in the neurons to be able to predict what people are going to think. And so after I did this, I kind of went through the process of selling my uh, second company, Sentiment, before I moved on to Sentiment Capital, and I worked with companies like 3M and Publicis, and something emerged for me. And the best way to get this across is if I had everybody just stand up it's been a long day, I'm the last speaker, I know it's been stay, it's like, oh, shit, I'm just gonna Everybody but this guy right here, sit down. Everyone, everyone sits down, you stand. Everyone sits, everyone sits, everyone sits. You're Mark Zuckerberg, you're also the top 1% of the world. Right, he's a handsome guy. And uh, the best way to think about it is if he was deciding everything you did in your life and you didn't even know everything, where you went to eat, who you voted for, everything you didn't even know. Now to add an additional variable to that, there are machines that he uses to do that. And he doesn't know what those machines are doing. He has no idea what those machines are doing. So that's what bias in media really is. Human bias in the form of one person controlling a myriad variables making its way into machines and then us not even knowing what those machines are doing, right? But what does this really mean, right? Well, let's, let's talk about Facebook for a second. Facebook was recently sued by the Housing and Urban Development Department because its algorithms were literally, this is not my words, this is Bloomberg and everyone else, it's being racist. They were discriminating against people of color blocking housing opportunities, blocking employment opportunities, and even in certain cases, advertising guns, right? And at Facebook, no one had any idea this was going on until someone from HUD audited them and said, hey, you know what, this is affecting a few communities and having some very real-world results, and then they had a lawsuit on their hands. So what does this mean, though, in, in relation to the real world? Well, I could talk to you about demand-side platforms and exchanges and probabilitorial and probabilistic equations and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to talk about that. I'll tell you one story, and this story is about Terence and Amari. And Terence, Terence lives on the south side of Chicago. And Amari went to Harvard up the road, studied music. Oh, we're around. Terence went to Harvard and studied music, and Amari lives on the south side of Chicago. And then he went back to his family's advertising agency to become a head of media buying with no experience. And the NRA approached Terence with a campaign for eight million dollars to sell M16. And Terence takes this on, and he decides to partner with a rapper to create a music video to sell this. He looks at his rapper's analytics, and he finds that one zip code in the south side of Chicago is responsible for his entire audience. So he decides to dump $8 million of buying spend into one zip code advertising guns in one of the most dangerous areas in Chicago. This affects Amari's life. Amari lives on this, in this zip code, and he's negatively affected by this. People in this community start to have different demeanors. Gun availability actually goes up, but the price goes down. A myriad variables eventually land on Amari being shot, despite being a 4.0 GPA student headed to the same place Terrence went to school at Harvard. So these are the real world results of bias in media, particularly this, the connection between programmatic advertising and shootings is something that sentiment has only brought to the attention of some of the biggest advertising agencies in the world. What can we do about this? Well, there were some really useful talks about some of the practicalities and the technicalities of how to fix this problem. But it starts with awareness. We have a room full of very smart people here. And sometimes what happens is we work on problems that are important to us, not understanding that we're in the 1%, intelligence-wise and sometimes economically. And what that means is that we need to take the responsibility to work on problems that impact the rest of the world. That's what Sentiment is doing. That's what we're looking to do with the Bias and Media Lab that we're trying to create here at MIT, and that's what we all should do. If you want to kind of work with me on this problem, simply hashtag Ask Sentiment on any social media platform now, after this conference, and I'll answer your questions. Thank you. So, uh, our next speaker